All right, so my next project is a P30. Now a P30 is basically meant to be a beginner's event. It has a 30 inch max wingspan, uh, an overall length of no more than 30 inch, okay? Uh, it has to use a commercial plastic prop, which simplifies things, and you're not allowed more than 10 grams of rubber. Now the reason I haven't done this before is because I haven't gotten radio control equipment that's light enough. Uh, the original equipment I was using was about an ounce, and I've been using a rule of thumb of no more uh, weight than about 20% of the plane. So, for that reason, I built large old timers like uh, the Corda, the Lanzo, and a modern design like the Tube Steak, uh, mostly because those are going to weigh five or six ounces anyway, so it'll be 20% that way. Now, if you look at my last video, you'll see I got the weight down to about 14 grams, so now I can use them in the wake, you know, it's less than 10% there. And I can use it in the coop, it just makes about 20% there. But to get down to a P30, which is supposed to weigh a minimum of 40 grams, uh, some places overseas do 50 grams, uh, that means I have to get down the equipment using my 20% rule of thumb to about 8 grams, okay? And I've done that, uh, so I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to post a video about that. I want to wait a few months until I've had a chance to thoroughly test the equipment all right, flying, and then I'll post that video. So here's the P30s uh, I've been thinking about. This one is the Tube Steak by Jim O'Reilly. It looks like a lot of fun. He has a longer fuselage version and a shorter high climb version here that he shows. Uh, another one I've been thinking about, this is called the Polecat. It's by Don Deloach. Looks real nice. Uh, it has a front leading edge there that's like a balsa D box and it also uses some high tech material. So this is the one I decided I'm going to do. All right, give it a shot. Um, let me show you what I've got here so far. Okay, I've got the fuselage is done and I did make some changes here. All right. I made it, even though he shows the long fuselage version, which is about 30 inches, and that clearly that's the contest winning approach. Uh, but I'm flying in a small field surrounded by trees, so I sort of want the fast high climb version. Jim O'Reilly shows one of those versions. It's got the fuselage about 21 and a half inches long, so that's what I did. It's just a rolled balsa tube. And here's how I made that. So I use this uh, 3 quarter inch aluminum tube. It's the same one I use for my blast tube. And then what I do is I take some bed sheet, all right, about two square feet, and I tape one end on the tube, all right, then I wrap it around really tight about twice, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And uh, then after I soak the balsa, all right, you can put it in the tube and uh, roll it around. Now you gotta find what works for you. What I do is I just put it on the floor, actually, and uh, so I have the sheet on there, and then I just kneel on, you know, the end of it so I can pull it real tight like this. And then I put the balls in there and then I can roll it, roll it in and then I wrap it up with some gauze and I let it dry overnight. Now the reason I like wrapping the sheet around a couple times is because that makes it a little bit bigger and you'll see when you roll the balsa there'll actually be a gap, okay, because it's a little bit bigger. Now the good part about that is when you take it off the tube, it'll actually fit back on and you can actually close up the edge and still have a little bit of room there. So in other words, you can glue it right on the tube, which I really like. And I also doped it right on the tube as well. All right. Now normally on this, I uh, would put on the inside either Japanese tissue, I've done it with polyspan, I've put in mylar. But the reason I don't like doing that now is because when you roll it, it gets compressed and I've noticed you still get little wrinkles with any of those coverings. And I've seen little pieces of the covering coming out in some of the rubber motors. Also, if you look on the inside, you can see it basically rips those little, uh, you know, wrinkled areas off. So I sort of just wanted the inside to be as smooth and slippery as possible. So this time I just doped it, okay? I was going to do four coats of 50% uh, thin nitrate. I ended up doing five coats, probably a little bit too much. But, uh, you know, with the five coats, it's very smooth and slippery. Then I rolled it on the tube, and then I doped on the lightest uh, fiberglass cloth I had. It's like a half uh, ounce per uh, yard or something like that. And I doped that on the outside. All right, and then I put also a little bit of a 64th ply reinforcer on the inside as well. I'll show you some more on that as I get it done. Now for the tail boom, I had a leftover kite stick that I had used on the other uh, coop, and I used that for the tail boom. Uh, the rudder I designed my own, all right? And it's gonna be RC, so here, 
I don't know if I can move it there. There you go. The way I did it is I just put a nylon screw in the tail boom, then I put a nut inside the rudder. And uh, so you just screw the rudder on basically, and I think that'll work fine for uh, RC. Okay, uh, there's the stab, and I covered both the stab and the rudder with a half a mil of mylar. Mylar, that's a half a mil thick base. No, I'm sorry, it's a quarter mil thick mylar, pretty thin. All right, that came out nice. Uh, you can see I also use my little, um, you know, nylon screw on the tail there so I can adjust the angle. I could also make it VIT later if I want. All right, and uh, it also has rib caps on it, so let me show you that. Now, the rib caps are carbon fiber. You can strip them yourself, but to be honest with you, I don't really like handling this material. Okay, it has, you can get very sharp splinters, and also if you sand it, it produces very fine dust. And you really don't want to breathe that, all right, because it'll get deep into your lungs, so it's really not good. So what I did is I bought strips. Here you go. These were actually from A to Z when they still had the model airplane division. Okay, but you can still get them from Alexander Kov or Mike Woodhouse as well. All right, and then you can see here's on the wing. So I used them on the wing. Now it took me a little time to get the hang of doing this. But basically what I did is this. I took this strip and I would cut it to length. And for that I use this. These are circuit board cutters actually. You get a nice square cut with these. And uh, then I glued it on with CA, cyo cyanoacrylate. All right. Now here's basically what I used. I found this at Home Depot actually. And uh, so basically what it is, it's gel. All right, so it's not runny. It doesn't go all over the place. You could just put little dots along the rib. Then I smoothed it with a toothpick. And the other thing is, as I pointed out in my other video, okay, CA tends to be very brittle, but this is rubberized, all right? So it's much more impact resistant. And that's how you know it's rubberized. On the cover, it'll say here, impact resistant. And then if you look in the back, it'll show you that it's rubberized, all right? So the way I ended up doing it is, I would get the strip basically in place, put a little dots of glue along, smooth it, and then I would push it down on the front with another toothpick make sure you gotta make sure you use a toothpick or a bolsa that has no glue on it at all otherwise you're gonna have a molary cur curly moment believe me I know from experience it'll stick to the uh, toothpick before it'll stick to the plane and uh, so what I basically did is I lay down the piece I get it in position now the nice part about the Loctite is it gets tacky really quick so it was really easy to do the under camber I would just press it down and it would stay right in place uh, and I thought that came out really nice, okay? The only bad thing is it only stays tacky for about 10 seconds, so if you don't get it in place, you don't get it right, you got problems, all right? So you gotta get it right the first time. Now the other thing uh, I'm doing here is, uh, let's see, I got the pylon, I'm still working on that. I had to make it a little bit bigger to hold the radio control equipment. I also got a gizmo geezer front end, all right? This is pretty neat because basically, uh, what it does is when you wind it up, it has a little spring and the prop gets locked in, in this nose piece here, okay? But then as it unwinds, what happens is there's a little, here, I'll show you here. You can see it's coming out now. So uh, when you're flying, the prop is locked in there, okay? But as it unwinds, you can see it has like this little screw in the back. And so it screws in and uh, that actually releases the prop. There you go. So it has a really nice free will mechanism, so we're going to see how this works. Now it's also hard not to use the half tube system to load the motors. So uh, what I had to do was buy a tube and then I cut it and I made it here. Alright, so this will fit in nice. That's for the front end. It turns out that the hooks that I use on my coupe uh, work perfectly in this. So I can just insert the motor and hook on to the back. I think that's going to work really nice. All right, so I'm gonna get it covered. Um, I'm a little worried about the under camber. I haven't covered a wing with mylar before, and I'm worried it's gonna pull off on the bottom. So I'm doing some tests with contact cement and Yoohoo glue stick, and we'll see how that works. And uh, I'll let you know. That I All right, here's the wing. I got it covered. I used a half a mil mylar. Now I could have used a quarter mil, but you know, I wanna see how puncture proof the half a mil is when I hit the trees. Uh, so maybe on the next one, I'll use a quarter mil. All right, now the nice aspect of this is I did some tests and it turned out that I was able to use Yoohoo glue stick. And this is great news for me because I like to use non-toxic glues, okay? And uh, there wasn't any problem with the under camber at all. I mean, it stuck right on there, all right? It was didn't pull off at all. The other thing I found out is that if it does pull off, 
Like sometimes that happens where at the dihedral breaks, you can just use a you know a heating iron and you can restick it down. Basically, you'll see when you put the iron on it, the glue actually turns color again. It reactivates it, so you can just easily stick it down. So I think I'm going to just use uh, Yuhu from now on. Now the last thing I'm going to do, as I mentioned before, is I'm going to paint the wing tips for visibility. I couldn't get the uh, Tamiya paint in uh, Manhattan here, so I ordered some Design Master floral paint online. I read you could use that one. So that'll be here in about a week, and then I'll finish up the wing, and we'll get it all together. Okay, so here's the gizmo geezer in action. So right now the uh, prop is engaged in the nose, and it's got a few winds on it. And when it unwinds enough, the screw in the back will engage. You'll see the nose will move forward, and it'll go into freewheel mode. Here we go. And there you go, you can see it move forward, now it's freewheeling. So it's a nice mechanism. Alright, so here's my P30. Finally finished it. Now the last things I did is I got some Design Master floral paint and I painted the tips, you know, for visibility. Uh, this was a fuchsia color they had that I kind of liked, I thought it looked nice. Alright. Um, another thing is it came, you know, it came out kind of heavy, about 65 grams, but that's mostly because of the wing and the fuselage. I reinforced the tips, uh, and the same with the stab. I have a lot of problems with these square tips. They always seem to break when you hit the fence or tree. This is kind of why I like the laminated elliptical tips. They seem to be a lot stronger. All right, so on the next one, I'm going to uh, lighten up the wing. I'll use 30-second uh, ribs and uh, thinner one-millimeter caps. And also, you know, maybe the pylon I can lighten up a little bit. I put too much dope on the inside of the fuselage, so that'll save some weight and so on and so forth. But in this one, I want it to be sturdy, so I wasn't too worried about it. All right. Now, uh, we got the gizmo geezer there. Now, the main thing I'm curious about here is I'm worried that if it stalls and it hits on the front, it's going to bend this, but we'll find out when I go flying. Okay, I'm also curious to see how well the mylar holds up, hitting the trees and things like that. Uh, I've got the equipment in there. What you see blinking is the uh, Hobby King altimeter. I thought I might as well put that in. Got the servo in. Now I just used a small push rod. All right, weighed about 1.2 grams. Now on the next one, I think I'm going to try going to a Kevlar pull-pull system. Okay, that'll be a little bit lighter. But on this one, I wasn't worried about it because it's kind of heavy anyway. So I just wanted something I was sure that worked correctly. I didn't put a hold down on the uh, push rod this time because it didn't seem like it needed it. It's very, very short. All right. Also on this one, I made the single pivoting rudder. So let me show you that. So there you go. Looks like it has enough throw on it. And uh, I like this. It's really much lighter. You don't need hinges or anything. So if this works out, I'm going to change my coops and wakes to the single rudder pivoting rudder system. Okay. Uh, another thing I did is, you know, I like winding outside the plane, so I made a half tube system. All right, and uh, basically here it is. Okay, we got uh, it's a Starling Flight Tech hook I use on my coop in the back, and it's got the gizmo geezer attachment in the front. So this way I could wind outside the plane, which will be really, really nice. I'm going to bring my gizmo geezer winder for this. Should be able to get about 1,200 turns on it. All right, so uh, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed building it. Looks like it's going to be fun to fly. It's supposed to be calm tomorrow, so I'm going to get out and fly it. I've never flown P-30. This didn't exist when I was a kid, so I'm really looking forward to flying it. All right, so here's my P-30 after a full day of flying. Still in good shape. Now, the uh, single pivoting rudder worked really well, so I'm really happy with that. I had good control over it. Okay, and it's very light as well, so I think I'm going to use that from now on on all my planes. Okay, uh, equipment wise, I uh, even had an altimeter in there, and so I got about 950 winds. I think I could get up to maybe 1200, but with that, I got up to 122 feet and I had a minute 47 second flight, so I think it's pretty good. I, I was surprised, it actually glides a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, I also noticed that the mylar held up pretty well. I had one time when I hit uh, something on the ground and it kind of flipped over. And, uh, you know, that um, AstroTurf really shreds tissue. So uh, I was glad to see that the mylar held up. All right, same with the gizmo now. Uh, you know, most of the time it came in pretty level on the landing, so there wasn't any problem with the prop there. There was once or twice where it kind of stalled a little bit and hit on the nose, but then the, the uh, nose block just popped out and that was it. Didn't do any damage to the prop at all. So uh, I really had a good time watching it circle around the field. It was enormous fun. All right, so I'd really recommend P30. This is a great flying category.